Hey, look, buddy. We're the renegades. And that means we react to videos. But not just any videos. Videos that you want us to watch. And recently, you've been wanting us to meet the team. I am All heavy right. weapons. <laughs> I am heavy weapons guy. I am heavy weapons guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yep, we're we're gonna we're gonna meet the team. <laughs> uh, clearly, I've seen all of these. Yeah, uh, he's what? No, what are you talking? No, well, that was a terrible medic. Uh, okay, <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna split these up into three chunks, uh-huh. and we're gonna go in chronological order because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's I I feel that that is required. That's so, the only way to do it. The first three that were released: meet the heavy, uh-huh. meet the soldier, mm-hmm. meet the engineer. Okay. So, without further ado, uh-huh. let's meet Nate. I mean, the heavy weapons guy. <laughs> yes, I'm heavy weapons guy. <laughs> oh. This was this was the one I saw. This first. was this was the f- this was one of the first trailers that they actually released for the game. Damn. Which showed you know a lot of the art style. It showed a lot of their animation capabilities too, because this was. If I'm remembering right, this was one of the first videos that we ever saw in Source Filmmaker. Yeah. And holy crap, can you do a lot with Source Filmmaker? Yes, you can. A lot. Yeah, so this this was one of the promotional trailers for the game. And and it holds up. Still, to this By day. By God, does it hold up. I think up. seven years later? Uh, Actually, nine. Like, it's almost nine years later. Okay, yeah. so... Actually, almost you, a know decade, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm going to check that. I was going to say, I and it was May. You up. said it was May what? It was May 14th. Holy crap, that's today. <laughs> I didn't notice Nine that. Nine years to the day since this came out. Nine I'm years. I'm dating the video. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Dude, All right. This is awesome. Yeah. All right. That. What a crazy random happenstance. I don't. I can't, you can't I, predict these you, things. You can't explain that. No, you All can't. Right. All right, so we've got it here. Let's get time, it going. Time to meet the team. Hello, Heavy. Ah, uh, yes. I am Heavy Weapons Guy. And this is my weapon. She weighs 150 kilograms and fires $200 custom tool cartridges at 10,000 rounds per minute. It costs $400,000 to fire this weapon for 12 seconds. It's so good. Yes. It's so good. Oh my God, who touched Sasha? Who touched my gun? Some people think they can outsmart me. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we got the I've video. yet to meet one that can outsmart bullet. <laughs> Cry some more. I've missed these so much. My I love gosh. these. I love these deeply. These yes. are so good. Indeed. Oh my god. Oh man. Okay, so we got that one, and then which one was next? It was Meet, Meet the, the Soldier. Soldier. There he is. Yep. All right. <sighs> so the soldier. Uh huh. Who's only identifying name that we've ever been given is Jane Doe. Um, after he was turned down for the draft in World War II, bought his own ticket to Germany and waged his own one-man war, only relenting after he heard of the war's end, I want to say in 1948, <laughs> after which point he... Received several uh, commendations that he designed and made himself. (laughs) The soldier is not a sane man. Of course not. He is, however, a rocket man. 
<laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> the way they handle this is beautiful. I love it. Okay. So, meet the soldier. Here, Here we, we go. go. Hello, Pyro. Yep. Oh! Ah! If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight. Sun Tzu said that, and I'd say he knows a little more about fighting than you do, pal, because he invented it, and then he perfected it so that no living man could best him in the Ring of Honor. He used his fight money to buy two of every animal on Earth. And then he herded them onto a boat, and then he beat the crap out of every single one. Get me up there! Oh, that rocket Oh, yeah. And... Boop. <laughs> And from that day forward, any time a bunch of animals are together in one place, it's called a zoo! <laughs> Unless it's a farm! <laughs> the, the fact that he got Sun Tzu and Noah mixed, mixed up, up is the best. It's the <laughs> best! Oh. Jesus. Okay. And then we have Meet the Engineer. Oh, boy. One Del Conager from the lovely little town of Bee Cave, Texas, who, you know, after working in the oil fields and obtaining 12 degrees in hard sciences. Jeez. 12, mind you. Not 10. But, Twelve. Uh, give me an extra two. Over I there. mean, yeah. there you go. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> decided he could ply his trades as a mercenary, using a uh, a few lovely little devices that he built himself. Oh boy. Uh, later, there were retcons to show that his grandfather, one Radigan Conniger, had designed some of them, but runs in the family. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Also, a heck of a guitar player. Ah, uh, yes. I can get behind that. Yeah, so yeah. Fun, fun fact, I, this one I do regularly quote from memory, not unlike the bit from uh, The Princess Bride. Ah. Uh, yeah, like I do this a lot just because I can. He, do, he does the Vincini speech. <laughs> at, you, know, the fi- you know, Vincini's final speech from Princess uh-huh. Bride time and time again. Yeah. And I, he does it to a T. Like, not right now. No, because I no, do have to, to actually it. fall you need to over. Save it. Yes. May, maybe for the last of these, yes. we'll do it. But all right, so um, I may be too busy doing medic impressions. <laughs> all right, so we have meet the engineer. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, look, buddy. I'm an engineer. That means I solve problems. Not problems like what is beauty. Because that would fall within the purview of your conundrums of philosophy. I solve practical problems. (laughs) For instance, how am I gonna stop some big mean Mother Hubbard from tearing me a structurally superfluous new beehive? The answer? more gun. Like this heavy caliber tripod mounted little old number designed by me. Built by me. And you best hope not pointed at you. Fun fact, it's Campfire Story. When he pauses for a moment, 
It's a scout that screams, but it's a sniper's arm that lands in front of him. Oh. Yeah. Interesting little things that I have watched these entirely too many times. Wow. Okay. So. And you you could see, because I was sitting there mouthing the words the entire time. Yes, you were. Yeah. So this is the first batch that we. Yeah, this this is the the first run. So. Jeez. Man. Like the. (laughs) Hmm. I love these. These man. these are so good, and this this goes to show that, I mean, this could have been a generic first person shooter. Oh oh, dude, this could have been a first person. Uh, this could have been as generic as it comes, but because of the art style, because the of art the- style, the writing, the, there is so much lore to this. They are still nine years later putting out comics expanding on the lore of this world and it'll never and it really they don't have to stop ever because exactly. it's just that broad of I mean honestly that's how you can tell a good story because if if there are so many doors open oh yeah if there are so many doors left open just from in the introduction of an idea I mean that right there is I mean honestly depending on the writing and everything that I mean, honestly, just the fact that you have that that that, that sandbox to play in. Oh yeah, that that huge sandbox of just of this idea that was put out there. I mean, when I mean, from what I hear, uh, the original team that worked on uh, that worked on uh, uh, the original, you know, Team Fortress Classic. Oh yeah, TFC. Yeah, yeah T- well, they they got hired on by Valve to work on TF two. Yeah, full time. Yes, and 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 it was and yeah, you know, just goes to show you guys. Steam loves. I mean, honestly, Valve loves their their modding communities, and they also love and they also love the people who you know the people who find new ways to make their games have fun. I'm pretty sure that the um, a lot of the people that created the original Dota mod got hired on to make Dota Two. Oh, it's just like um, uh, the uh, Portal games. I mean, honestly. Oh the, yeah. Yeah they. Oh Yeah man. they're working on a game, I mean, and it actually. The, the, the only uh, art asset that was kept was the color of the portal. If I'm remembering correctly, the game was called Narbacular Drop. Yeah. And then they hired on the team to make Portal. Yes. And, I mean, that's on, that's taken off tremendously. Yes. And if they could ever learn to count to three. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that, that, that's, that's... That's a whole other thing. That's... that's um, actually, interesting fact about Portal. Um, I'd say it's been out long enough to where I can say this. So, at the very, very end... Uh, the explosion happens, and you're outside. And there is a hoop that rolls past you. Originally, Valve thought that that hoop was going to be the thing that people would remember, not the cake is a lie, not the companion cube. No, no. Hoopy the hoop <laughs> was supposed to, was what they expected to be the big meme. Instead, it was and, and instead the lie and the companion cube. Yep. Uh, it's it's interesting how these things. Well, you, change, you can't but. you can try and predict how your audience will take some things, but but what the audience likes is what what the audience likes is what the audience likes. Yeah. That's just like uh, it's just like everyone thought that Fry was going to be like the you know with the big character from Futurama. Instead, here comes Bender. Oh boy, here comes Bender and Zoidberg. Yes, Zoidberg. Yes, indeed. I mean. You know, it, it's. I mean, people and and artists who see what their what their fans like and don't let it. Uh, okay, when they adapt to it and don't let it completely change the product. Yep, that is when you. That's when something good happens. Um, people who dive too deep into what their fans want, they tend to oversaturating the product with a good thing and making people sick of it. That's just like. That's just like. We had Frozen stuff shoved down our throats for the longest time. I thought Frozen was a great movie. I also thought Frozen was a very good movie, but I also thought it was very, very overhyped. It was, and that doesn't take away the fact that it's a great film. It's just people, but it does make you real press tired it down of it your throat. Places, yes, um, and I love and I love the characters. I love the songs. I love I love the story. Yeah. You know, Hans Christian uh, Hans Christian Andersen. I mean, honestly, the, yeah, you know, the callbacks to you know old fairy tales like that. Disney going back to its roots. What made it good in the first place? I'll, I'll give you another example: the writing on Red versus Blue. Yes. For a while there, people were like, "Oh man, Caboose is so funny," and so they were like, "All right, give him more Caboose," and then people got tired of Caboose. Yeah, and then, now that they, now they've got the balance a little they, better. They figured out the balance. Well, 
it, you see, a lot of studios go through that their first time, their first yeah. time through. And well, for Disney to go through it, you know, with Frozen when they've been in business almost longer than any other entertainment empire out there, I mean, it it just goes to show you some things never really die. You know, th- some things never really die. When some when so, too much of a good thing is presented to you, you get sick of it. Yeah. And uh, th- thankfully, that hasn't happened with Valve. Valve has done very good with their IPs, and I think they're skittish about moving moving forward with their IPs. And and you know, yeah. you know, and no matter what the you know the dev teams say, and no matter what the dev teams say, you know, whenever you know, like the Half Life team or the Left for Dead team, or even or even the the Team Fortress team, you know, they want to move forward and everything, and they have new ideas and everything, and they have add-ons that they want to put on. Yeah, and it, it's just it's just when you when you're too afraid to move forward on some that's just, that's just like what what we dealt with for the long for the longest time you know can we dedicate ourselves to this full time or can mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. Uh, and and seeing how you all react to us and everything we can i just hope that valve realizes that you know their fans will love them pretty much no matter what they do it's just you have to give them you have to give them something that they want i mean we've waited 12 years for for half life 3 yeah when we waited 7 years for half life or 6 years for half life 2 yeah so it's pretty much double the wait time. And I know Gabe, Gabe Newell, okay. and people who pester Gabe Newell for this. Like, okay, every time somebody makes a joke about Gabe Newell's wait, he delays Half-Life 3 another week. No, I— That's, I, I mean, so, get, guys, let it go. We want to get—we actually want to get this gonna game. Say, I was going to say, Gabe Newell can be as big as he wants. Guess yeah. what? The guy is awesome. He is a genius. I mean, honestly, there's a reason why he was a Microsoft millionaire, and now he is a Steam billionaire. And on, on top of that— You'd best learn not to threaten Gabe Newell if you've got a game on Steam. Yeah. Because that, that happened. There was a developer that, like, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he, he threatened Gabe Newell's life. And Gaben responded by removing his game from Steam and making sure he'd never work in this town again. This well, this town I being, go- you know, Steam. But Well, of course. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, guys, when, when something is cha- – when you're challenged on something – you stick to what you you stick to your guns. I mean, especially when it's something you believe in. Like, like Gabe believes in in Steam. I mean, and that's why he's dedicated a lot of, uh, and they're they're actually that's why they're doing putting more effort into it now than ever. Yeah. I mean, you've heard about the recent shakeup with Steam and everything, and I'm glad they're doing it in some aspects. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is they're they're trying something new. They're feeling out what what sticks. Yes. And you know, like the 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 paid mod thing. Yeah, that was that was a whole thing. But in some ways, I'm glad that that whole debacle happened because it showed, you know, it showed, okay, people want mods to be free. All right. Well, we're not going to do that anymore. Okay, people want mods to be free. But if someone themselves, you know, they put in, you know, they they code this thing for months on end, and they want some sort of recompense for it. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I can think of a them. few mods where that's pretty justified. Yeah, that's merited. I mean, honestly, you know, like high-definition shader mods that make the game pretty much photorealistic like, I'm, in some regards. I'm thinking of um, stuff like uh, Project Brazil for uh, New Vegas, where it adds so much new content. So, okay, yeah, so there yeah. you go. Um, and I mean... You see, there, stuff like that, yeah. I mean, I can understand, you know, people want to charge a little bit for that. I mean, but, you know, just general basic mods that are on that are on Steam, that people upload for free to Steam. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of in those... In the Steam Workshop. It's one of those tricky things. Yeah. But, you know, I'm glad that they they sat down and went, all right, we need to we need to think about this and look look at it and see what's going on. Yeah. But they also said, you know, you know we've listened to what you're saying. And we understand, and we're sorry. Yeah. You know, which is more than we can expect from some people. Anyway, let's not get into that right now. Um, <laughs> All right. So we <clears throat> we rambled and ranted <clears throat> enough for one evening. Yeah. Uh, guys, once again, thank you all so much for tuning into this. Uh, kind of the... <clears throat> Excuse me. Nine year anniversary. <laughs> yeah, odd, Unbelievably, like, oddly enough, it. this this is when we decided to record these, and there it is. There we go. 
So guys, once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed the video, uh, let us know. Uh, leave a comment down below. Hit the like button if you like it. Also, check out the original videos down in the description below. Check out Valve. They have uh, all sorts of interesting stuff on their uh, on their YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And guys, lay off Gaben, or else his wrath will be swift and fierce. Yeah, like we're we're already not getting Half Life Three until you know twenty. 20, 20, 30. 20, 20 XD6. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> anyway. So, guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, hit subscribe if you want to see more. We post new videos every day. And until next time, we will see you later. Peace out.